The Pigeon Tunnel on Apple TV coming out this week. Errol Morris, one of my favorite documentarians, favorite filmmakers of all, and here he's back with Philip Glass and his trademark stylistic concerns, including here an interview with an old man, John le Carre, famous British novelist, British spy novelist, one of the best-selling authors of the last 60 years, in fact. And this is one of my, I think this is one of his best movies. The reason why I say that is I, I can compare it to his other old man interview movies, The Fog of War with Robert McNamara and The Unknown Known with Secretary of, I think, Defense Donald Rumsfeld. You know, both of those are American political figures involved in very serious, troubling wars. John le Carre, though, is a much more elegant, interesting person, in my opinion. And he is more aware and clever, I think, than these other two figures. So I think this was an outstanding catch. Plus, Lucare died in 2020. Morris must have filmed this right before then. So good on him for catching, you know, one of the great novelists of the last, I, I, one of the most readable novelists, but a great novelist as an artist in the last 60, 70 years. Lucare wrote about spies. His spy novels were his major works. And yet th these weren't just like one-off genre thrillers, like a James Bond Ian Fleming type thing they were probing psychologically politically the state of the world the state of the human self and the soul and so like his novels this movie comes off as while well, entertaining in part it's extremely philosophically engaged including asking questions about how artists deal with reality and whether there is such a thing as a true or real self and all kinds of fascinating sort of philosophy 101 philosophy 201 type questions and that's my thing. Morris delves into biography somewhat, autobiography for Le Carre, who is also, David Cornwall was his real name, and he had a fascinating father named Ronnie Cornwall, who was a huckster and a scammer. He would get a lot of money, then spend it lavishly. Le Carre's mother left at five years old, so his world's dominated by his father, who seems to be the kind of deceiver that you see in Le Carre novels. And, and Le Carre says, well, I owe everything to my father. That's probably true, and yet there's more to the story than that. So it's a fascinating figure to think about an artist or a writer growing up under this man who then, as the artist becomes a spy for the British government in the mid-20th century and then turns writer, what's he going to reflect on is both of those experiences being a British subject as a spy and then under his father. But that's not like 5% of the story, even though the father story is in here a lot. We're asking a giant question, who are we? Who are you? Is there a real self? And Lucari has a pretty dark view of, of things with both psychologically and politically at the, the heart of things we'd like to believe there's something in control that the president of the united states or the prime minister of whatever country is making decisions on behalf of his or her nation and there's some kind of central control room also that there's one for the self and that we can probe that and we can find it that we can find the real thing and the real decision making place and while Lacari says, you know, my novels are filled with two kinds of people, dupes and string pullers, and the world is filled with either one or two of those two types of people, at the heart of ourselves is nothing. There's a bare room metaphor brought up in this movie that we are a bare room in the center of ourselves. And Lacari says that only about himself. He will not speak on behalf of other people. But that's any giant questions about who are we, what are we, what makes us motivated? Why would we commit betrayal? Not just personal betrayal, but political betrayal, which Le Carre dealt with in his life, both with his father and with his spycraft and knowing other people in sort of the sp British spy industry. Why do you betray people? Why, what's up with betrayal? And Morris wants to know all about that topic or as much as he can wring from this great artist. This might not be everyone's cup of tea, I think, but Morris just turns you know, the, the interview itself on himself and sees an interview as really examination of his own self and his own artistry. There's a meta level to this movie, which I think more, if you're not a Morris fan, you might not get, you haven't seen his other movies, but that's all fine and good. I think the fascinating idea that an interview, which is focusing on a subject like Le Carre, is really about the interviewer Total postmodernism thing there, but I like it because it makes an artist like Morris think about what he's doing and why. And some of this movie concentrates on that very thing. How am I going to start the movie? What am I going to say next? How can I deal with this guy who could be a deceiver because he knows very well how to do that via his father and his own spycraft and being an artist 
who creates a world of illusions in order to entertain a reader. So all of those things come up for me and they're, and they're really fascinating to chew on. I love the Philip Glass score. And as I'm arguing, you know, this is a, a pretty fascinating movie if you're into it intellectually. Only, at only 90 minutes, I love it, the, the, the pace and the timing. Maybe some things could be changed about it. It's not my favorite. I love the, the Fog of War. I think everyone should watch the Fog of War, that Morris documentary with Robert McNamara. And his, his one on Stephen Hawking is really good too. I think this is up there with them. And as I said, it's one of his best, but really all of his movies, <laughs> most of his movies are, are really, really good. And this one is of the same quality here he is making in this documentary, you know, later in his life. Have you seen The Pigeon Tunnel? Did I describe it well? What else could we say about it? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.